All Christians believe sincerely that Jesus was the Son of God and that He is God, the Son. But what do we learn from owners of Christianity? Those who created Christianity. Those who manufactured Jesus and sold Him to the world. What do we learn from them? Welcome to Committee Hebrew Ethics. Subscribe to our channel and share and leave your comments so that we can continue to research and dig deeper into these philosophies that have dominated our lives and lives of our ancestors and future lives. The primary area of study that we need to do in order to answer this question and to ameliorate all other issues that surround Jesus, Christianity, Judaism and Islam is to understand who they say God is. You can read our book The Creator or a God which you can get from Amazon. It clarifies and elaborates on this concept of deity. A deity is a supernatural being that believers often refer to as God. They are usually highly respected and worshipped. The Semitic origin of the word God comes from the ancient Canaanites. The Canaanites were melanin dominant human beings. They call their deity El. It's also found in ancient Mesopotamia as Elu or Eel. The Hebrew call him El or Eloha. In Aramaic, it's Ela, and in Arabic, it's Ila or Allah. This word in English now, God, who is God in English, comes from the Proto Indo European language, which infers to that which is invoked, Rat or Guthan, which is Proto Germanic, where you get the old English word God for supreme being or deity, the Christian God, the image of God or God like person, where you get the word God. So we have clearly defined the origins of the word God as a deity. The plural is Elohim which is found in Genesis 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and that God you find you read in the English Bible is actually plural. It's gods. The plural of El or Eloha which indicates God in the singular form but it was never used. So from the owners of Christianity, when we ask the question, who was Jesus? Since they say he was the word of God, it means he was the word of Elohim, plural, many gods or deities. Then he is part of deities. Very few Christians understand this and take this very seriously. So let's continue to ask who are the owners of Christianity? It is the set of early Christians. These earliest Christians maintained that Jesus was a human being who was made God divinized into a God, a divine being born by a virgin. Very few Christians think deeply around this concept of virgin birth, which the owners of Christianity, the Roman church, gave them. So, from the owners of Christianity, who was God? They go to Isaiah 7 14 and base their theology of the Immaculate Conception, but that story did not originate. In this book of Isaiah. This story comes from ancient Hamid, Africa. The Christian Jesus is really the Egyptian Ausari and Horas conflated together. Horas was conceived by a virgin Isisu. Ausari was killed and he resurrected and managed to impregnate Isisu. These are myths. He searched for all the other pieces of uh, Ausari who was chopped into pieces. These are totemic. They are not literally. So this story predates Christianity and the church by thousands of years. So Horesu was born of the virgin mother Isisu during the winter solstice on December 25th. This represents the sun, the, that solar sun that you see. In an ancient text in the Abidos temple of Seti 1, Isisu herself declares, I am the great virgin. You can read the book that we are showing here. These are BCE stories and uh, not AD stories or during the year zero stories. The Romans took over the reins of power around 30 BCE from the Greeks. 
the Persians had ruled Kemet for 185 years, and before them the Greeks had ruled Kemet for 274 years, and then the Romans took over and ruled Kemet for 700 years. And then the white Arabs, who are Europeans, who came into Africa via Turkey, have still been ruling Kemet. Now it's over 1,400 years. So when you look at the story of the virgin birth, the founders of Christianity know about this. Nath is his temple of size. She says, the present and the future and the past I am. My undergarment no one has uncovered. The fruit I brought forth, the sun came into being. About the time of the winter solstice, Isisu gave birth to Hippocrates, imperfect and premature. Plutarch says that. So you can go to Microbius Saturnalia. At the winter solstice, the sun would seem to be a little child, like that which the Hamitians bring forth from a shrine on an appointed day, since the day is then at its shortest. So they took all this and they know it and these are ancient melanin dominant stories and they crafted their religion uh, beginning after the period they call uh, the death of their christ which is just a chronological point they picked and they took over these myths as we have shown already in many many videos issue that we are dealing with here is that uh, that was explained and elaborated by Dr. Walter Williams that there has never been a man that ever walked the earth in human form of any race, creed or color by the name of Jesus Christ, also known as Serapis. So the black Africans and the priests were skilled in divinization magic and under threat of genocide and massacre by the Greek Roman invaders and the Ptolemies, they sanctified a bull known as Apisa, meaning burn, to burn or to break a vow which was true because they had already broken a vow by allowing the Greeks to come and settle across the red line and then they took the divinity of a great ancestor Ausari and they fused them together using a process that we are going to reveal today known as Tokolosh Ngozi or Ingwendele combined these two in magic and in rituals that also involved human sacrifices. They fused many other negative traits into this therapies in a form of ritual monotheism, hoping that the avenging forces they are putting into this Tokolosh will be able to push these people beyond the red line mandate. But they had already broken their vows and opened their floodgates. So, the Romans assimilated the original doctrines of Serapis with the Hellenistic religions before Jesus ever walked the earth. Very few Christians are aware of this. So, we're going to give these proofs now from a lot of writers during that time. Apollodorus identifies the Argive Apis with the Egyptian bull Apisa, who was in turn identified with the Serapis. Pausanias AD 160 also conflates Serapis and the Egyptian Apis of the Egyptian sanctuaries of Serapis. The most famous is at Alexandria, the oldest at Memphis. Into this neither stranger no priest may enter until they bury Apisa. You get this from... Uh, James Fraser uh, in his Bibliotheca Pseudo Apodolas. They go on to say the cult of Serapis and Isisu was introduced into Greece in the 4th century BCE, that time when Ptolemy was divinized and he became the Christ who is worshipped today by Christians. And then into Italy, later into the 2nd century. In 146 AD, Emperor Antonius Pius, according to Edward Gibbons, 1883, introduced the worship of Serapis in Rome and had the mysteries celebrated on May 6. The worshippers of Serapis were called Christians, and those who devoted to the god Serapis, the BCE worshippers were worshipping their savior, Ptolemy Sota, or their Christ as savior. The charge of Serapidolatry 
the worship of the god Zerapis was brought against the primitive Christians by no vulgar accuser, no by God intolerant reviler, but by the philosophic and truth respecting witness, the Emperor Hadrian, who accused them for that. This is not popular in Christianity. No Christian will think about this. No Christian will know about this. And no Christian will believe this because of the programming that the spirit in Gwendel and Gozi of Serapis that was fused by our ancestors for this tokolosh works on them. So who was Jesus to them? It was Ptolemy. The spirit of Ptolemy was accompanied by a tokolosh image. Very, very clear. So very few Christians are aware of how their Jesus came about. The earliest images that have been uncovered, supposedly portraying Jesus, have been dated to around AD 240 to 56. Obviously, these artists who lived 200 years after Jesus' ascension to heaven had never seen him or known any of his contemporaries. No wonder why initially they figured him as a lamb. Reading from the Old Testament, and this evidence is from the owners of Christianity who defined Jesus. Those closest to him left no artistic images of his appearance. This wasn't just an oversight because they were busy, but because he never walked the earth. Then artists took the most notable characteristics of divinity from the greco roman world and combined them into an image of a roughly 30-year-old man devising the image recognizable as Jesus today. The slender, pale, bearded, nautic looking haired Jesus. And then we want to ask, what caused the Council of Nicaea to convene in 325 CE? It was what is known as the Aryan Controversy, in revolving around Serapis theology and uh, Christus Serapis, the Greco-Roman deity. So the owners of Christianity fought Arian, Arianism according to what we know today originated in ancient Africa, they used what is known as Neo-Platonic philosophy and the scriptures and taught that Jesus Christ is neither God nor equal to the Father. Christ is a perfect being, that's what they say, but not God. This they call it a heresy. And then Arias in a Nicene Congress or conference was punched out, beaten out, and then the Emperor Constantine ordered that the full divinity of Christ must be the doctrine. The equal in divinity to God the Father must be the doctrine. This is what Christians don't really think seriously about. Their divinity, their Jesus is not supernatural. is man-made. And the spirit that operates in him is the spirit that is was infused through magic. From the owners of Christianity then, who was Jesus? He was a Roman or Greco-Roman deity who came from the ancient Egyptian Serapis. Thus, after their victory, the Greco-Roman church went steam ahead in establishing Christianity as a global religion. So here's the proof now from our ancient church history timetable time by Reverend Charles Arabics, you can see that 50 BCE there is no Christianity, 40 BCE no Christianity, 30 BCE no Christianity, 10 BCE no Christianity, and then they come to their zero year where they say Christ was born, where they demarcate and put their Christ there, and then Christianity starts afterwards, and then it starts as a one holy Catholic apostolic church. In the 325 AD, this is where you have the first ecumenical council of Nicene Creed, where they made Jesus, the deity they are creating, God. And then from there, you get all your denominations. So there was no denomination. Your denomination never existed. Christianity never existed prior to that. Nasia say, even if Catholics faithful to tradition are reduced to a handful. They are the ones who are the true church of Jesus Christ. They are Christ they made and created. So here is more proof from those who created Jesus Christ because they know the truth. That's why you find Pope Leo 
saying here, what profit has not that fable of Christ brought us? Christ fable. He says it's a fable. It has given us more money, more wealth, more power than anything. This is what a pope says, the head of Christianity says. The pope's pronouncement since characterized has been characterized as the most infamous damaging statement about Christianity in the history of the church. It is damaging because it is revealing the truth. That's what the, and then there is the, the Pope Nicholas V who despite that the Bible says love your neighbor, love and stuff like that put an edict that allowed slave trade and as well as this conscience and the guilt conscience, the natural guilt conscience of the Portuguese and say no 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 you are doing a good job you should enslave these people you should promote enforce and you should gain from that international trade but you find black people today defending Christianity as well as others defending Islam the doctrine of discovery which was promulgated by Pope Nicholas IV through a Papa Obu 1452 says they should search everywhere, capture, vanquish, subdue Saracens and pagan worshippers everywhere, their kingdoms, their dukedoms, their principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. The church is not regretted or repented of this. It is indeed a shame that Melanie dominant converts follow their colonizer in slavery in the guise of spirituality and as Christians believe sincerely that Jesus was the son of God and that he is God the son even though the owners of Christianity tell them he is a fable concocted by them they forgo all reason and use faith and now from a scholar but E. but D. Ehrman we know that he says there are three positions that Christianity has taken that Jesus is God, that Jesus is God in man, and that Jesus was a human who later was divinized. These are the Christologies that they built. That's why black people would drop religion of Christianity because of slavery and then jump into Islam, not knowing that Islam was the first and is still colonizing them. So the owners of Christianity, they know this. It's only when you started to build a better melanin dominant future together and uh, by joining together that we can be able to succeed when you think about this seriously it is time to say goodbye to pagan religions like christianity or islam or judaism because the origins of jesus is divinization by men the owners of jesus live their lives in profligacy knowing that men made deity we must revere our own ancestors and our own divinities it's time for our religion subscribe to our channel Hamidi Buru Ethics spirit is everything you miss it, you miss everything this is Hamane Jatopi Priest Charabai L.M. Dumizu Lukuni Kenim Jakan Jamskabanu saying health, wealth and spirit and remember the owners of Jesus know that he is fake why do you believe in? Why believe in the fact? Ameni.